Hello, beta testers. <laughs> Before deleting his account, a senior Rocksteady developer wrote, quote, I don't know if you knew this, but $60 in 2000 is $93 now due to inflation. We're undercharging you for games and have been for two decades. Pay us what we're worth. What you're worth. In 1994, Bungie released their first of the Marathon series of games, a first-person shooter. By 2004, 10 years later, Bungie released Halo 2, one of five games in their Halo run. In 2014, 10 years later, Bungie released Destiny, and even with 20 years of shooter experience passed down generations of developers, even with the legendary Halo series behind them, Bungie confidently made a beta available for cautious players to test this uncharted territory. The term shared world shooter floated around which described the game's capacity to seamlessly matchmake players into each other's instances, said plainly, people could just walk around in your world, not unlike people in a server on an MMO. Spacious zones that allowed players to ride vehicles or mounts to get around with style. In its marketing, Destiny boasted variety in enemies, abilities, vehicles, and locations. In Destiny's first trailer, action took center stage, and while touching on the shooter at its core, the trailer showcased the much more appealing, sexy, space magic. Bungie made a first-person shooter MMO light with PvP and, eventually, a cosmetic shop. The rest is history. Rocksteady's upcoming $70 always online battle pass having looter shooter has been delayed again, with some speculating it could be pushed to 2024, which would place it neatly 10 years after Bungie got away with Destiny. I have heard the brain dead shilling this Sushi Squad game claiming the battle pass is optional because they're the type of drooling monkey that prefers poop flung at them. $70 games should not have a battle pass full stop. Destiny didn't include paid cosmetics until 2015, a year after the game came out and after the Taken King expansion, which players will tell you was when Destiny felt complete. Destiny succeeded because the game was built to be the game before the cosmetics or the battle pass were a thought. Sushi Squad is built around its battle pass and cosmetics and every screen will feature reminders and something under a spotlight in the hopes of making sure you, potentially, invest more than the initial asking price. Paul Tassie in 2015, just like you shills currently needing to be bent over, was begging for microtransactions. Please, daddy, push deep. Tassie writes, yes, free is great, but... Do I even need to read more than that? This nigga wrote that. Yes, free is great, but... Rocksteady is unproven in the live service space. Rocksteady is unproven in the shooter space. And if you count Urban Chaos back in 2006, then it's no wonder that you think the same Rocksteady from eight years ago is involved in this horse shit. You want a banana, monkey? <laughs> the founders left the studio. Isn't it incredible that y'all need to learn the same lesson every other year? So soon after Marvel's Avengers, Crystal Dynamics wants players to forget that it used Chadwick Boseman's death to pretend that they needed to move back content that actually wasn't finished. In their still broken dead service game and now Kevin Conroy's last performance is FOMO or fear of missing out because the always online Sushi Squad game will inevitably shut down like all the other dead life services, so you better buy it before we do. Call us whatever name you want, Chills. We've made our voices heard, and we won't need a skilled surgical hand to carve the cancer out of this industry. In fact, we'd rather a lightsaber to just leave it in pieces. The industry I remember wouldn't need to beg to dismember in games. 
would need to beg for tits and ass in a friggin' fighting game. Or, and this is my favorite, for badasses to not spout cringe every second, like Blade asking about your mental health and saying phrases like, I've got the gift of gab. You hired Black Dynamite to say some cringe, white bullshit like that. Yeah, I'd imagine a leotard is too sexy for a sucker like you. The sneaky part, of course, is Rocksteady chose not to include the information that Always Online was necessary for their game in their showcase. Hmm. And what an underwhelming showcase it was. Shoot the weak spots, looking like three-year-old Fortnite gameplay, and dubstep. You know, I can rustle up a Deadpool game trailer that ironically, obnoxiously uses dubstep 10 years ago. Rocksteady used it hoping to catch the Zoomer audience, and it truly signals just how out of touch this new studio is. This stuff doesn't matter to a shill whose opinion switches on and off like a light switch, but to anyone with taste or talent, you know the choice for dubstep betrays the game's confusion in its personality. We have enough confused people who don't know what they are or want to be, and these things make it into the game. Saints Row, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Halo Infinite. These games suffer through an identity crisis that compromises the entire experience. I know your game will suck, Rocksteady, because the psychiatrists, the focus groups, the consultants, the people cutting trailers together, it seems like everybody is not doing their job. And it's as if they were hired based on ticked boxes instead of how talented they were in their field. I'm black. Is that Does that make it okay for me to talk about? Your twice delayed eight years in development hell, full priced, battle pass, first time live service looter shooter inspires even less confidence than you can imagine. Specifically after you've hemorrhaged creative leads and wasted the spotlight PlayStation granted you. Game trailers are opportunities to show gamers what they want to see. You clearly didn't hire or have any gamers at your studio, so you failed. Game trailers are opportunities to take people into your creative vision. Remember a while back when I made that bingo card and threw a bunch of freebies on there and was still amused at how little Sushi Squad offered? Please comment below what you would need for this to be something that you gave your attention. Does it need to be free to play? Would it need to have playable Batman? Just comment below. Love you. Thank you for liking the video. The truth of the matter is... I think these are the types of developers more focused on whether or not you can pet the dog. And the comedy is, if they'd looked out a window in the past decade, they'd see how many other games do that so much better than what they're offering. 
Games cannot be developed in an echo chamber, and I refuse to see little to no progress in the space of a decade and be silent. Thank you to the shills. Thank you to the companies hiding dislikes. You're going to force us to stop the entertainment and make our fucking voices heard. Because what you're mixing up is devoid of talent, style. It's like the opposite of art. You're deliberately making women ugly, but also you want $70 and to have a cash shop and to have battle pass, nigga. It's been a real fight making these with the computer acting up lately, so I appreciate all of you and whatever support, contributions, likes, and comments you're providing to the patrons and sponsors. I love you more than you know. Um, give me two more kind of suggestions, and then I will put that with Null of Clintar's full creep cover that he's requested. Love you. Later.